one B, May 2017, question number one, board. So we have here advanced MA, advanced management accounting, advanced management accounting, May 2017, May 2017, May 2017, question number one B, question number one B, question number one B, CPA, AMA, like that. And uh, these guys are coming up live to you from RCM Online College, Online College, which does in this case here CPA classes, and it happens to be charging only Kenya shillings are 100 per lesson. Kenya shillings 100 per lesson. Kenya shillings 100 per lesson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We are told uh, some more are limited, May 2017. May 2017. If you have this book, if you have this book, uh, uh, my friend, you simply go to page number two. Page number two, page number two, May 2017. Question number one B. Some more are limited has to decide which of the three mutually exclusive products X, Y, and Z to launch. The company's directors believe that the demand for the three products will vary depending on competitor's reaction. There is a 30% chance that the competitor's reaction will be strong, a 20% chance that the competitor's reaction will be normal, and a 50% chance that the competitor's reaction will be weak. The company uses expected value to make this type of decision. The net present uh, values of the possible outcomes are as follows. We are told a market uh, researcher believes that he could provide perfect information on potential competitors' reaction in the above market. Required, advise the management of Samoa Limited on the maximum amount that should be paid for the information from the market researcher. Ladies and gentlemen, the very first thing that I need to do is to come and put down my payoff table. My payoff table. This pay of table, ladies and gentlemen, is in the form of net present values. Net present values, net present values. Remember, in our pay of table, we must always, we must always have alternatives here. Always, and ensure you have alternatives there. And then you have states of nature. You have states of nature. Just a, a little uh, a preview. Remember states of nature, these are those events that are uncontrollable. Those events which are uncontrollable. Events that are uncontrollable, which basically can be controlled by God, are what we are calling states of nature. So states of nature are probabilistic. They are probabilistic. States in nature, in most cases, especially if you are in the risk environment, they are probabilistic. Like in this particular case, they have told us competitor's reaction and they have given us the probabilities. So the competitor's reaction is supposed to be strong. Strong, we have normal, then we have weak. We have weak like that. If you look at our examiner, he had put these particular states of nature in a wrong place to ensure that you get a zero. To ensure that you get a zero, so we have to interchange them so that we have alternatives here and the states of nature there. The alternatives of the gentlemen are the products that we shall launch. The products which will be launching, we have product X, we have product Y, we have product Z, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. So what we need to do for that particular matrix is to transpose it. We transpose that matrix, we change the rows to become columns. So that row one, which was 400, 800, 1200, now goes down. So we have 400, we have 800, and then we have 1200, 1200. Then we go to row two. Row two becomes column two. 600, 1200, 600, 1200, 600, 1200, 800, 800, 800, 800. From there we go to the last one week. I can see 1000. I can see a thousand, a thousand, and then we have sixteen hundred and a thousand, sixteen hundred and a thousand and a thousand. So this live class to you is coming uh, right away from RCM College, courtesy of a student, a friend of mine who is in Dubai, who has paid and asked me to have it uh, straight away. 
uh, online, online. So it's a great favor for you people. But next time, the ones who are on Facebook, please go by this. Just buy these videos at 100, a lesson like that. Very good. Now, my friend, I happen to be having what here. I happen to be having my payoff table. This payoff table, the states of nature, you have to indicate their probabilities. So their probability for strong, they have told us up there, there is a 30% chance that the competitor's reaction will be strong. So competitor's reaction being strong, 0.3. And then we have 20% chance that the reaction will be normal. 20% is the same as 0.2. And then lastly, we have 50%, 50% weak, like that. Now, the moment, my brother, I see this kind of an arrangement, what I will do is to go to each alternative and ascertain the averages. Come and give us what we call the expected monetary value. Give us the expected monetary value. Expected monetary values. Expected monetary values. If this person goes for X, we are not so sure between the three which figure will prevail. We don't know whether they are going to get an LPV of 400, 600, or 1,000. So what we can do is to average. If probabilities were not available, we would have taken a simple average, where we would have taken 400 plus 600 plus 1,000. And then whatever you get, you divide by three. But now here, we happen to be having the net present values and their probabilities. So what you do for expected monetary value, you simply do what here? You simply multiply. You simply multiply. So we have 400 times 0.3 plus 600 times 0.2 plus 1,000 times 0.5. So we are saying is that for us to be able to get expected monetary value, we'll take the X values, multiply it by their probabilities, and then we sum like that. And then we sum like that. Right? So I'm waiting for the answer. What is the expected value if you're going to launch X? Please, you can comment there. You can comment there. What is the expected value if we are going to launch X? If you're going to launch product X, what will be the expected value? 400 times 0.3 plus 600 times 0.2 plus 1,000 times 0.5. Please give us a value. Do you have a calculator? The calculator kindly give us the value 290. According to my friend, 290 it can't be 290, no. It has to be in between. It cannot be that low. It can't be that low. It is 400 times 0.3 plus 600 times 0.2 plus 1,000 times 0.5. Give us a figure. Give us a figure. Must have left my calculator somewhere. Uh-huh. So according to my friend here, he's getting 740. Thank you very much. 740, 740. That is X. How about the expected monetary value of Y? Expected monetary value of Y, I can see I have three figures. 800 times 0.3 plus 1200 times 0.2 plus 1600 times 0.5. Again, give us a figure. Give us a figure. So we have, uh, okay, okay. So we have 800 times 0.3 plus 1200 times 0.2 plus 1600 times 0.5. Give us a figure. What are we getting? We are getting a 1280 like that. 1280. From there, we have 1200 times 0.3 plus 800. Times point two. Times point two plus a thousand times point four, which at the end of the day will give us 1020, 1020. So on the basis of expected monetary value, on the basis of expected monetary value, I would straight away go for what year for Y. Because Y happens to promise the highest expected monetary value. Y is the one that has the highest expected monetary value. This one here, 1280, is the best EMV. And if it is the best EMV, then we are saying that uh, we need to go ahead and launch what year? We launch Y. We launch Y. 
So in this case, you have the basis of the expected monetary value, we shall launch Y. However, that is not what the examiner wants us to do. That's not what the examiner wants us to do. This examiner wants us, if you look at the required, the examiner wants us to advise the management of Samoa Limited on the maximum amount that should be paid for the information from uh, for the information from the market research, how much. So basically, he wants us to ascertain the value of information, what we normally call expected value of perfect information. Expected value of perfect information. EV of PI. EV of PI. So how do I get this EV of PI? My friends, to get EV of PI, expected value of perfect information, what we normally do is to come straight away here and take the expected value with perfect information minus best EMV. Minus best EMV. Quite an important formula. To get expected value of perfect information, I will take expected value with perfect information minus best EMV. Best EMV has already been taken care of. Best EMV is this 1280 has already been taken care of. How about this expected value with perfect information? So this expected value with perfect information is an easy thing. Expected value with perfect information, if I know it is strong, that will prevail. If this person gives me information that is strong, that will prevail, and they're so sure of that, then what I'll do as a decision maker, I'll come and a strong, and I pick the highest. Remember the higher the MPV, the better of the eye. I pick the highest to there. I pick the highest to there. 1,200. So ladies and gentlemen, whenever we talk of this EV with PI, you should always attack your states of nature one at a time, selecting the highest. You go to your states of nature one at a time, selecting the highest. Like now here we have 1,200. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we have 1,200 again being the highest. The last state of nature here we have 1600. Now from there, ladies and gentlemen, what you need to do is to come and attach the probabilities to the highest figures you pick. Please don't forget the probabilities that we have. We know that uh, for strong, we had a figure of 0 0.3 here. Normal, we had a figure of 0 0.2 if I'm not wrong. For weak, we had a figure of 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And therefore to get EV with the PI, EV with PI, EV with PI, EV means average. So the average here is 1200. So we'll talk of 1200 times the probability, which is 0.3 plus come here. We'll take 1200 again times 0.2 plus come here. We have 1500 times what year? 0.5. So please give us a, a figure. Give us a figure that I want to get an average given that we will be having perfect information. So then what we have there, we have 1,200 times 0.3 plus 1,200 times 0.2 plus 1,600 times 0.5 times 0.5 is an element. I'm able to see a figure of 1,400. So 1,400, 1,400 is the expected value with the perfect information. 1,400 is the expected value with information. So what I will do? Without information, I'm able to generate 1280. With information, I will be able to get some additional, more value, more value. So that difference is the value which is created by the information. So come and give us EV of PI, EV of PI, EV of PI, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have here for EV of PI? So EV of PI, we'll talk about 1400 minus best EMV, which is 1280, which is 1280. So 1400 minus 1280, there we are. So we have 1400 here, minus 1280, which gives us 120. So this is the value of perfect what? Information. Value of perfect information. And if I know that this perfect information will be generating this amount of wealth, then there is no way I will be willing to pay anybody more than 120 to get that information. So this is the value of information and that is the maximum amount we as a firm will be ready to part up with 
to get the value of perfect information, to get the value of perfect information. Any question, any question, any question? Any question, any question? Now, if there is no question, there is this other particular question that my friend uh, asked us to do. At times we take such requests, at times we take such requests. There is a question of umbrellas. Umbrellas, still under decision theory, under decision theory, under decision theory, we have uh, a question of uh, umbrellas, 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 umbrellas. Yes. So for those of you who have uh, these books, these books, not actually umbrellas, this is a question of May 2012, quite uh, an old question. May 2012, it's an old question. Let me look for a, another question. For those of you who are following us on Facebook, I make a humble plea. Please ensure that you are able to share, you are able to share this particular post. You are able to share the particular post on your timelines. So perhaps before I get that specific question that I'm looking for, we could try one here. We could try this one of December 2013, question number 4A. December 2013, question number 4A is on page three. Page three, it's on page three, page three of the revision kit. Page three of the revision kit, RCM's revision kit. If you go to page number three, you should be able to try that question very fast. Page three of the revision kit. Very good. So I've gotten the question that I want us to do, but because I've given you some work to do from this particular revision kit, page number three, we can just finish this very fast. Very, very fast. Very, very fast. They are telling us there, December 2013, question number 4A, that uh, Sawa Limited can choose from three mutual exclusive projects. The net cash flows from the project will depend on the market demand. All of the projects here will last for one year. The forecast net cash flows and their certain probabilities are as follows. So we have the market demand and then we have got the projects. We have uh, the payoffs there in form of cash flows, in form of cash flows. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a straightforward one, quite easy, straightforward one, quite easy. Straightforward one, quite easy. So we have our payoff table, which must always be in this form. We must always be having here the alternatives. Alternatives, we have A, B, C. And then we have our states of nature here. States of nature, states of nature here. States of nature again is demand. You see, for market demand, ladies and gentlemen, you could advertise aggressively. Yes, you could advertise aggressively, but how the market is going to behave purely at times, in most cases, is an act of God. How many farms have we ever seen which advertise very aggressively, but at the end of the day, they don't get people. They don't get people to consume their product. So in this case here, ladies and gentlemen, Market demand, after all we are seeing, they have given us the probabilities of those events. So this will automatically be our state of nature. So we have week, we have week, we have average. 
we have average. And then we can see here, we have good. We have good. We have good. We have good. So we have our probability here, weak is 0 0.3, average is 0 0.5, and then good is 0 0.2 like that. This is a gentleman for project A, we have 400. Project B, we have 300. Project C, we have 500. The same case here for average. Here we have 500. Here we have 350. Here we have 450. And then we have 600 here. Here we have 400. And then lastly, we have 650. And then they want us to do something very easy. They want us to give them the expected value of the net cash flows. Expected value of the net cash flows, straight away they want us to calculate expected monetary value. So come and create a column here for expected monetary value. Create a column there for expected monetary value. Create a column there for expected monetary value. So how do we get this expected monetary value? To get expected monetary value, that is the easiest thing that this examiner can ever ask a CPS and five student to do. You see, if I invest in A, if I launch A, I could either get 400, 500, or 600. So I'm not so sure between the three which figure will prevail. So I would rather work with an average. And the average is what we are calling an expectation, what we expect between the three. So if I did not have probabilities, the expected monetary value would have been 400 plus 500 plus 600, whatever I get, I divide by three. But now here, I happen to be having what your probabilities. I happen to be having probabilities. So if that is the case, remember, expected monetary value then will be x values times their corresponding probabilities, and then you lump them together. So what do we have there, somebody? We have 400 times 0.3 plus 500 times 0.5 plus 600 times 0.2. You give us a figure, which is 400, what year? 90 like that, 490. Come and give us the expected monetary value of B. Expected monetary value of B, I will talk of 300 times 0.3 plus 350 times 0.5 plus 400 times 0.2. What figure are we getting there? 345. From there, we go to the next one. 500 times 0.3 plus 450 times 0.5 plus 650 times 0.2, which will end up giving us 5 what year? 5 or 5. So ladies and gentlemen, not unless I'm wrong, not unless I'm wrong, not unless I'm wrong, not unless I'm wrong, ladies and gentlemen, my figures, if my figures are correct, on the basis of expected monetary value, I'll always recommend that project which has the highest expected money, highest expected monetary value. So the highest expected monetary value is 505, and as such, we would recommend the product what year? C, to be loaned. So we should launch product C. You should launch product C. You should launch product C. Now, after that, I want us to read the next question. The next question here wants us, ladies and gentlemen, to give them value of perfect information. Value of perfect information. So how do we get expected value of perfect information? How do we get expected value of perfect information. To get expected value of perfect information, could you kindly write down the formula for us just as a quick way of uh, fixing this thing in our mind? Could you kindly write uh, for yourself this figure, this figure, this parameter, or rather this formula of expected value of perfect information? Even students who are following me on Facebook, I expect them to be doing exercises as we advise as we advise that so we want to see ladies and gentlemen whether they are students who have been able students who have been able who have been able to remember that formula expected value of perfect information expected value of perfect information expected value of perfect information so please, the ones who are watching us on FB, I expect you great students of ours to share.
I expect you to share, I expect you to share. So as I go through your comments here, I expect you to give me the answer. Great, 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 great. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Expected value of perfect information is always obtained by us taking expected value with PI. Expected value with PI minus best EMB. Minus best EMB. The five of five that we circled here is our best. This is our best expected monetary value. So, then how do we get expected value with the PI? To get expected value with the PI, ladies and gentlemen, normally what we do is to go to each state of nature one at a time, one at a time, assuming that this expert advises us it is weak. This is the first state of nature. Where shall we land at? We shall land at the highest, which is 500. If he tells us it's average, we shall land at the highest and the average state of nature, which is 500. If he tells us it is good, we shall land at 650. So then with the perfect information, with the perfect information, ladies and gentlemen, what figure are we looking at? So we have this circled figure that is 500. Of course, because of the wide expected average, we must bring on board the probabilities. So 500 times 3. Plus, we have here 500 again times 0 0.5 plus 650 times 0.2. So what we are doing, it's either it tells us it is this figure, or all we need to keep on adding the number probability, or we that you keep on adding. So ladies and gentlemen, if that is the case, then I expect you great students of mine to come and give us this parameter from your calculator. From our calculators, we well, hear what we have. We have 500 times 0.3 plus 500 times 0.5 plus 650 times 0.2, which will end up giving us 530, 530, 530. And therefore, my EV of PI will be 530 minus the best EMV, which is 505. So 530 minus 505 gives me an expected value of perfect information equivalent to 25. Equivalent to 25. Equivalent to 20 what year? 25. Equivalent to 25. Equivalent to 25. And of course, that will be the maximum amount that I'll be willing to part up with to acquire flawless information. To acquire flawless information. To acquire perfect information. To acquire perfect information. To acquire perfect information. Any question?
gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to go straight away to advanced MA past paper, November 2017, question number one. We have here November, November 2017, question number one. November 2017, question number one. Question number one. For those of you who have already bought our books at shillings a thousand, you simply go to page number 154. These RCM books. RCM books are great. Division kits, especially, they have questions and what year answers. So November 2017, question number one. Required, the required, it's always important that you start with the requirement. Required, construct a pair of table showing all the possible outcomes. Two, advise the management of triper limited on the optimal level of production based on the expected value, maximaxi, and the maximum criteria. And the maximum criteria. So the key word here is pair of table. Once you're not able to construct that pair of table, ladies and gentlemen, then that is it. That is it. You will not be able to get all the subsequent, you shall actually get zero out of whatever max the examiner has given you. So you're told Triper Limited is a company that specializes in the production of umbrellas. For the year ending 31st December 2018, the company is planning to produce special promotional umbrellas branded Jumba. Triper Limited wishes to determine the optimal number of umbrellas that should be produced. Additional information, if all the umbrellas are sold within the year 2018, they will be sold at shillings 900 each. If all the umbrellas are sold within the year 2018, they will be sold at shillings 900 each. If the company is unable to sell all the umbrellas within the year 2018, then they would have been sold in the following year at shillings 300 per umbrella, meaning that these umbrellas fall under the category of perishable goods, goods whose value reduces with the time. The demand for the umbrellas depends on the performance of the economy, which is highly unpredictable. The following are the possible states of nature, so we have economy, probability, and demand there. Not five, Triper Limited has to decide to produce the umbrellas at one of the states of the economy in order to match forecast demand. Six, the opportunity cost of not selling an umbrella that is demanded is shillings 100. If you don't sell an um umbrella, which a customer has come to ask, wanting to buy, there's an opportunity cost there of 100 per umbrella. So they want us to construct a pair of tables. So this pair of table construction will be quite uh, an easy thing, ladies and gentlemen. What I will do, I will come here have here what we call supply. So we have here supply, and we have here the demand. Demand, what will be demanded is not within my control. What will be demanded is what we call the state of nature, the probabilistic. The pro like in this particular case, ladies and gentlemen, what we have there, they have given us the economy. If the economy is good, if the economy is good, you can see probability there, 0.3. We have a, a, a average, average, average 0 0.46. Then we have poor, poor is 0 0.24. Poor is 0 0.24. So come and make yourselves nicely like this. And according to these people, if the economy is going to be good, my great students, if the economy will be good, we shall sell how many umbrellas? According to them, we shall sell 500,000 umbrellas. 500,000 umbrellas. If it's average, 350,000 umbrellas. 350,000 umbrellas. If in this case, ladies and gentlemen, it's poor, we have 300,000 umbrellas. And then, of course, from what they have told us, when it comes to us deciding how many units should we supply, they have told us from note number five, note number five, Triper Limited has to decide to produce the umbrellas at one of the states of the economy. So again, we are going to talk of the same states. So same quantities, which are demanded the ones in this case here, we are thinking between. Which one should we supply ourselves? So 350,000, then we have 300,000. And then you will come and have yourselves like this. Have yourselves like this. Have yourself like this. Have yourselves like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen to me very carefully because this question confuses so many students. 
the first scenario is that scenario where I have produced 500,000. And we have 500,000 being demanded. Perfect match. Perfect match. So no problem at all. Here we shall be able to sell 500,000 times, ladies and gentlemen, times what here? The selling price. Remember to get revenue. We normally take quantity times price or price times quantity. So the selling price, because we shall be selling everything normally, we shall be selling everything normally, the selling price there as per note number one. The normal selling price would be 900. Minus the cost of doing this exercise, the cost of uh, an umbrella on our side will be a prime. We are told whatever we are producing, the production cost per umbrella is 400. So minus 500,000, 500,000 times 400. So please give me a figure for this. Give me a figure for this. Get a good calculator and you give us a figure. Give us a figure, give us a figure, give us a figure. Give us a figure, give us a figure. Give us a figure. Uh huh. I have my calculator with me here. We are talking of 500,000. 500,000 times 900 minus 500,000 times 400, which will end up giving me a lot of money, 250 what year? 250 million. We have our figures in terms of millions. So we have here 250. 250. Now, I would want us to interpret this, this cell. In this cell, what has happened? What has happened in this cell? We have produced ourselves 500,000, but the demand is much lower. The demand is 350, meaning that uh, we are going to perish with some things. We are going to perish with some umbrellas, 150,000 of them. So what will happen here, of course, for us to be able to get the normal sales, you always compare the supply versus what here somebody, the demand. And always the normal sales will be defined by the lower. So here normally we are going to sell 350,000 times our normal selling price. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what have they told us about these excess umbrellas that we shall not be able to sell within the season? But if you're not able to sell them within the season, there's no problem. There is some guaranteed demand for us next year. So the extra umbrella that we never sold, in this case here, are 150,000. But this will fetch a lower price. They will fetch a lower price. They will fetch a lower price, a price of how much? We are told from note number two that if the company is unable to sell all the umbrellas within the year 2018, then they will be sold in the following year at 300 per umbrella. So times what year? Times 300. Right? Minus the cost of cost of producing all these, which will be 500,000 times what year somebody? Times, uh, times 400, times 400, times 400, times 400. So could you kindly try, ladies and gentlemen, could you kindly try, ladies and gentlemen, could you kindly try, ladies and gentlemen, to give us that answer? Give us that answer. What do we have there, somebody? What do we have there, somebody? What do we have there? Somebody talk to us. So give us uh, the value there. Give us the value there. Give us the value there. Give us the value there. And those great students of ours who are watching with us on Facebook, who are watching us on Facebook Live, kindly go ahead and share this. Go, and, go ahead and share this on your live streams. So we have here 350,000. So we have here 350,000. 350,000 times 900 plus 150,000 times 300 minus our 500,000 times 400. What figure do we have? A whole 160 million. I'm putting my figures in millions. So I'll come and write here 160. 160 here. The payoff is 160 there. Go to this other particular cell and give it a proper interpretation. Give it a proper interpretation. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we have? 
We have a situation where we have supplied 500 to the market. You've taken 500,000 to the market. And then at the end of the day, we have only 300,000 being demanded. So meaning that normally we can only sell 300,000. These are the umbrellas that will be able to attract the normal price. So we'll come on top of 300,000 here, 300,000 times our normal price, which is 900. How about these other 200,000 umbrellas which we're going to perish with? We've been told that uh, for them, there's a guaranteed demand next year. But of course, they will come to, uh, uh, they will be bought at a lower price. So the extra umbrellas here are 200,000 times 400, uh, times uh, in this case here, 300, selling price reduced is 300, minus the cost of production, which is 500,000 times, ladies and gentlemen, each is 400. Each umbrella production costs us 400. So get your calculator. Your calculator, what do you have there? 300,000 times uh, 900 plus 200,000 times 300 minus 500,000 times 400, which at the end of the day gives us 130. 130 is the pay of 130 million, but our figures, pay of figures are in millions, like that. Now let's come to this other bit. This other one, ladies and gentlemen, we have supplied 350. We have supplied 350. But how many of them are being demanded? More, 500. So meaning that whatever we had supplied will not be enough. So, but we shall end up selling everything. So we shall end up selling everything, which is 350,000. At the normal price, because you have sold everything, at the normal price, which is what here, somebody, 900, 900. But now there is a problem here. There are people who came for these umbrellas whom we have not been able to sell to. Meaning that there is an opportunity cost. How many umbrellas have we not been able to sell to? 150,000. Because in total, in total, in total, uh, we have a demand of 500. So 350,000, we shall be able to satisfy the demand. But 150,000 people will go home without this. Remember, there is an opportunity cost of what here, 100. So you need to come and subtract the opportunity cost of the people that you shall disappoint. The people shall disappoint. Minus the production cost. Here we have, uh, in this case, here the gentleman produced how many? We have only produced 350,000. So 350,000 uh, times the cost of producing, which is 400. So then we have 350, 350,000 times 900 minus 150,000 times 100 minus 350,000 times 400, give us a figure which gives me 100, what year somebody? 160, 160, 160. No, now, could you kindly try, ladies and gentlemen, to finish up that question for us? Try, ladies and gentlemen, to finish that question up for us. Get all the payoffs. Get all the payoffs. Try getting all the payoffs. Try getting uh, all the payoffs. Try getting all the payoffs. Try getting all the payoffs. Try getting all the payoffs. So like uh, 350 versus 350, 350 versus 350, I have 175. 175, and then we have 350 versus 300, 350 versus 300, I have 145 with me here. And then we have 300, 300 with 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, I have 150 here. And then we have uh, the middle one uh, being uh, equal to 145, 145. And then lastly, we have 100 what here? 30, that is uh, 300 with 500. We have 130, 130. So these are figures that you can confirm from our book. This advanced MA book, at the moment you have advanced MA book, RCM, uh, of course written by uh, great lecturers in the market. You should be able to confirm this in these particular books. Yeah? And then of course, the moment you have the pair of table, getting the max mini and the maxi maxi, uh, best alternatives will not be a major issue. So, and again, if you would want a complete, a complete video of these, 
I would really recommend that you join our live online classes. You join our live online classes where we are basically doing like a CSR. We're only charging our students 100 shillings per session. Otherwise, it has been a pleasure having you around here spread the good word about our online classes. And of course, the moment you do that, ladies and gentlemen, we will really appreciate. And all the students who are doing AMA, we happen to be having a WhatsApp group for them. A WhatsApp group for them, what they basically need to do is to give us a call. And we shall be able to add them to our WhatsApp groups. Otherwise, thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Good day.